Welcome again once to living in the 21st century. Joining me today is Dr. Nancy V. Brown, and she's from the organization Brave Girls Rise Up. Nancy, it's a pleasure to have you on the show here today again. Hello, Mr. Errol Ford. Thank you so much for having me today. I cannot wait to get started and <laughs> to open up to your viewers. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Uh, one question, this, this name stands out. Brave Girls Rise Up. How did you come up with that name? Mm -hmm. So the way that that name came up, it was uh, one day I was scrolling through social media. I had just got back in town from getting my master's accreditation from the Hair Loss Council. Mm -hmm. And I was feeling pretty proud of myself for my accomplishment mm -hmm. as the first woman of color, the youngest to get this type of master's um, certification for, from such a respected organization. And I was, you know, sitting there and I was like, well, you know, I was taking this hair loss class that I'm still taking that's very, very, very difficult. Uh, I've been struggling with it, with my uh, schedule. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I was like, oh, I'm going to write a hair loss book. And, you know, since I'm dealing with so much biology and chemistry and things that I really didn't really enjoy, I said, well, I might as well, you know, capture some of this information because it's actually pretty interesting. It's pretty important. So, you know, that was my focus. I was focused on writing a book and it was going to be a hair loss book. Yeah. Well, one day I was uh, scrolling through social media and I saw this, uh, this picture of this little girl. She looked, she was a white little girl. Um, and she looked like she was, you know, like had dark makeup under her eyes, like mm -hmm. that kind of punker type of rocker look. And so I was like, okay, something just popped my attention about her picture but then when i read that headliner it was something in the in regards to that she hung herself on a tree on facebook live because okay. she was sexually abused by her stepfather and that story struck me on a very personal note because i was able to relate to her and at that second i heard holy spirit say how dare you survive and not help others survive and I remember I just started crying and weeping and crying. It was a very spiritual, dramatic moment, but it was, you know, it was very convicting. Mm -hmm. And um, and I just remember crying and crying and crying. This was 2017. And I literally, while I was crying, I fell back in my seat, <laughs> which was also, that's what made it so dramatic, but it was still so spiritual. And um, And I just remember knowing that I was feeling like I was on top of the world. I had accomplished all my goals, all the things, the titles, everything that I wanted to accomplish, I had accomplished. And now I was going to focus on writing this book about hair loss. But at that moment, it was like God was telling me it was time to speak. It was time to tell my truth and get from behind, you know, all the titles or all the whatever's what's your real truth nancy you know what's your truth how did you get here that, that little girl didn't see you that little girl didn't see you she didn't see that she can be like you and she can accomplish her dreams she didn't see so my spirit was fighting and being convicted on such a high level that i remember just sitting there and saying okay you know I just remember saying, I don't want to tell that story. And I just cried more like, you know, a little girl begging her father. I remember I was like, crying, but I don't want to tell that story. And then I heard the Holy Spirit just saying, you have to be brave. You have to be brave. You have to be a brave girl. You got to stand up with love. And I remember while I was crying, you know, at that time while I was writing my book, I always write on a sticky pad and I put it on the wall. So at this point, um, I wrote down, um, brave girls stand up and I put it on the wall. And, you know, like I said, God was convicting me as far as the importance of me having to get the right story out, not just the pretty story of celebrity master, hair loss, expert, specialist of the da da da. -da. God didn't want that story. <laughs> I was like, but wait, before I go, I have to have this particular story. Mm -hmm. And I was fighting the spirit of suicide during that time. Mm -hmm. 
I really was uh, on top of the world with titles, but I was drowning with, you know, I was a single parent at the time. I went through a really bad divorce. Financially, my finances took a very hard shift. Mm -hmm. And in order for me to keep my kids, I had to really do some big sacrifices. Uh, And uh, one of them being was, you know, giving away uh, our assets to my ex-husband. So that created even more of a financial burden for me. And um, that's how I was able to move out of state because I had given what what was requested or what was wanted. And so that, again, created me. Now I became a single parent. Now, you know, I had my finances shifted. I'm out of state. I don't have family. I was alone and I was dealing with coming out of a divorce, right? And so the enemy was dealing with me and telling me, you might as well just give up, just die and die with the titles and what what the recognition that you've earned and just die now instead of shaming yourself and facing the shame of where you are today and uh, all that you lost. So I was fighting uh, the spirit of suicide and then I was fighting the spirit of uh, pride because I wanted to just be recognized for my hard work. Right. And then I was fighting the spirit of conviction because Holy Spirit was like, how dare you survive and not help somebody else survive? And I was like, Lord, I'm embarrassed. My story is embarrassing. I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to even be associated with it. Like, goodbye. That's like Uh, old news. But the Holy uh, Spirit now is convicting me. Look at what has happened because you she didn't see you in herself. The ability to overcome. Yeah, I, I want to ask you this question because you firsthand experience ancestral deviance in your family setting. And I am quite mm-hmm. sure, yeah, and I'm quite sure that this isn't something that is isolated. This is something that happens in families throughout the world. Here in the United States of America, the country where you came from, your country, it's, it's popular in the African nations, especially where women have, they don't even have a say in anything. And mm-hmm. how would these ladies who are crushed, or these young women who are crushed with this kind of uh, mental distort in their mind, they want to be brave like you. How would you convince them to crack out their shell and come forward with true stories like this? Well, the first part right now, for me, what convicted me was um, God was showing me, he was forcing me to study at that time and to research. This is 2017, around maybe February, March, somewhere there. He's convicting me to research suicide rates going up. He's convicting me to see what me not speaking up can do to a whole new generation, a baby generation, them seeing all that I've accomplished and thinking they'll never amount to that because of where they are today, not knowing that I was where they are today back then, right? So I really had to realize, and while I was listening to Holy Spirit more and getting connected, that it was bigger than me and it wasn't about me. I was just a vessel. And disassociate myself from not the pain so that I cannot relate, but the pride. Well, well you know, I really look at the people like, why are you why are you serving? Why is God using you to serve? Is it for you to publicize what you've done? No, but they didn't know that I was just running from that hurt and that embarrassment and that shame and that person that I became, that I was running from myself into the arms of success or hard work to get away from that. Right. Um, you, you faced with a breakthrough, um, despite of whatever circumstances you had been faced with. But for those who may not be privileged or conscious-minded enough, to mm-hmm. step into a realm where they look above the circumstances and rise to the occasion, um, how would we bring them out of that state of depression? They want someone to look up to. 
you right now is an image. You are an icon in the eyes of these ladies. You are a doctorate, and they can say, well, you know what? If Dr. Nancy do this, and they follow a pattern, maybe I could get to this level or close to this level and make something good of myself. Now, I think that's the, the nourishment at this point, the mental nourishment that young people need. Um, give a word to them that will move them from this state of depression, because they're depressed. Most of them are looking at killing themselves. Um, you, you probably know about um, Nelly with Chemo Wellness Foundation, and it's a situation in her country right now where young people oh. um, are just killing themselves. We spoke up to this morning, she wanted yeah. to get hooked up with you that you can give guidance and counseling and so forth. Um, at this point, what would you want to say to, to um, change the atmosphere around? Because it's immediate. Um, it's not a situation where you get a cut on your foot and you run to the, to the um, emergency room and get a few stitches and um, all is well and good. These are mental, life last, long lasting effects that would um, serve young women in a lifetime. And they want you, Dr. Nancy Brown, to take them to the next level in their life. Um, one of the things I want to say is, whatever it is that you're going through right now, it wasn't your fault. And a lot of times when I tell the girls that, they're like, yeah, but I did this and I did that. And I say, okay, let's, let's just think about this for a minute. Whatever it is that's hurting you and it's still hurting you today, chasing you, whether it's yourself, something that you did in the past or a big mistake, whatever the case is, forgive yourself. I always tell them, forgive yourself. You can walk in your change. You can walk in your change. And the more you walk in your change every day, the more you begin to change. Be consistent with the change. Now, if you're in a situation where you're in a, a panic and you don't know what to do, Seek somebody who is safe, who you trust. You got to have someone you trust or someone who's safe. And if not, you can call the crisis hotline, which is 988. Okay, that's a national number that uh, you can use. And there are trained counselors, coaches, therapists, doctors available on the other side of that line. A lot of times people do not feel comfortable calling 911. I was just driving down the street with my son and my heart broke. My son is so good. Like he's, he said to me, mom, when I start driving, cause he's been like really kind of like not excited to drive. You know, he said to me, I got to drive with my license uh, with my registration papers and my ID around my neck. I said, why? I said, just put it in your glove compartment. He said, I am not reaching for anything. <laughs> no. I, that's the first time I ever heard him because I'm, I'm like, they don't watch the news. They don't know nothing that's going on in this demonic, toxic world that we're fighting in. <laughs> yeah. And he, he knows. They got phones. They see stuff. They know more than what we know that they know. And they are fighting a lot of other things in this generation that we've been fighting. Mm -hmm. But I think seeing the images on TV of how uh, these kids are affected right. by gun violence, uh, even by the people that are supposed to protect them, even sometimes their own parents, their own family members. Mm -hmm. These kids come with a high level of trust issues. I have trust issues. I don't trust nobody. Yes. Like, boy, I don't trust nobody. <laughs> you know, it's a process. And yes. you gotta relate and you gotta understand these kids. Of course. I want to ask you this question though. Um, and I want to look at the mental fortitude and restoration of confidence. And it goes beyond just a young lady getting raped by a dad or a brother or an uncle or a grandfather, whatever the case may be. Um I want to look at from both standpoints. We got to add voice men, because there are men that pimping young ladies into sex trade every day. They are kidnapping young ladies and selling them into sex um, organizations. Um, there are young ladies who voluntarily want to sell their body to make a living. Mm -hmm. And we, has, we have to be able to differentiate, but in the process of that, we also have to educate. 
um, for centuries, hundreds of years, women were thought that they are only there for domestic chores. They were there to serve a man at his pleasure, get pregnant, cook his food, look sexually attractive, so to speak, do whatever it takes to please the man. And it always was about the man. The older generation come down, they taught her daughters how to cook and how to clean the house and how to get earned clothes for her husband or boyfriend or whatever the case may be. You were always mentally taught how to prep yourself for a man. Well, on the other hand, a man absorbing his mind that, well, this is what a woman is here, is here to serve me and to do for me. And for too long, women had not had been excluded from this independent faculty. It was a generational of, I want to say a legacy of generational spell that came down through the lineage from one generation to the next through women that all there is to do is to make a man happy. And that is far from biblical truth. The fact that God took a rib from Adam's was to show equality of a woman to a man, equality. Otherwise he could have created a separate woman out of a piece of clay or soil and made her separately, but he didn't do that. She was there to serve equally. Man over the years had took it upon himself to brainwash to exploit and do whatever he chose to do and women had came down through the years without having any say and a lot of biblical principles have been taken out of order like christ the head of the church so is the man the head of his household of course he is but the woman is equally um equally as powerful as you are in your home she has just as equal say so having said that I think we must educate young women that they have to respect their female anatomy. Um, I'm not saying a woman should show, show off her femininity if she needs to do that. That's her body. But in her mind, for some reason, she can't conclude that that's what she's worth. Because if that is what she's worth, she's going to sell it to the higher bidder or give it to the higher person who think they are wealthy and I heard moms and women years ago would tell their girl children, hey, don't be like me. Look for a man who can give you something, who can make you rich and who can yeah. make you happy. This is a shell that women have to come out of. But more importantly, I think the law has their, their right to stand up for women in this country. Um, take it away again, sorry. No, I agree with you. I think you took it. I mean, you did a great job breaking that down. Um, I think a lot of what's happening, and this is just from being a woman and dealing with women and studying women and um, and seeking God for revelation, because sometimes I'm telling you, I could I could be here and then I could be over there. So women, you know, we deal with a lot of emotions. Our hormones are changing. They're shifting. <laughs> during many different stages of our lives, not just when we're children or teenagers, um, dealing with that with my youngest son, a lot of changes going on. And I, I'm like, you know, normally he was my baby and now it's like certain things are changing and shifting, right? With women, uh, young women, when we're turning and shifting and growing, a lot of changes start to happen. And I'm not making excuses for that, but also what happens is um, we don't, Really, we struggle in the area of respecting each other. And this is from a Spanish woman to a black woman to a black woman to a Spanish woman to a white woman to a black yes. woman, a white a black woman to a white woman. There's so much disrespect that's going on across in the area of womanhood. Then these young girls are coming up. They're seeing this. They're doing this. To even some of us who are from a different generation, a different country, a different world, a different type of forethought, and it's creating just so much disrespect in the area for women against towards women. It's so much mess. Sometimes I'm like, that's why she act like that. Cause her mother's like that. But then sometimes I meet the mothers. I'm like, oh my God, I love her. I would so be her friend. Her daughter's just so fresh. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I get to see young girls 
I volunteer um, at the Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice with the girls. And I get a chance to see the girls. I get a chance to uh, speak to them. And I get a chance to coach them. Like, I get to, to be like, oh, don't do it like that. Okay, now, you got to have respect. You talk to them, what? No, no, how? And you know what I mean? And they're sharing things with me. and I'm, But I'm able to see a different point of view. Because even when they're, like, being rude to their stepfathers, I correct. Sometimes when I'll ask certain questions, I let them tell their story, get it out, because I have no emotional attachment to it. So tell their story. And then I get a chance to ask them questions. And then they're like, oh, no. If the t I said, take yourself out of it for one second, just for a second. Now walk in. You're, you know, you meet someone. You really care about them. Da, da, da. And then I break certain stuff down. So I'm. Kind of like, am I teaching them how to be respectful? Because I'm even teaching them, watch your mouth, da da da. I'm like, you know, mm hmm, don't don't do that, don't do that, because then what happens? You go in the room, and then what happens? And you have a whole week off, then what happens? I start breaking it down. By the time I'm done, they're like, oh, forget it. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> so. Anyways, now if they met me a different way, they probably wouldn't uh, take me that way. That's the reason I'm telling you all of that to say. We have to build trust, relationship, and respect in order to communicate. And that's across the board when it comes to men and women, because I believe that our, our husbands are our, 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 our kings, you know what I'm saying? And we are their queens. And I feel like you should rub his feet and you should make him a nice meal. And he should be able to do the same for you. And I feel that uh, it should be loving, peaceful. And I feel that there will be disagreements. Um, you know, there's going to be times you're not going to probably care too much for each other or like each other. But you still have to respect each other. And so there's things that I do believe in and I do have a different understanding of it. I don't I think that there's times I sit with women and they're like, I'm not doing nothing for no man. I'm man better than that. And I'm like, OK, as a mother of a boy who is going into a husband and a man, because I always tell them, like, when you have your wife, you think she's going to be waking you up. Get up. Da -da -da -da. No, because I don't want her doing that. Like, what, why? Do you, your kids gonna wake you up when they gotta go to school? You gotta be able to get up. So I had to take the game from my younger son. I had to set certain boundaries, you know what I mean? And I'm like, no, you're not gonna be like this. I'm, as far as what I'm doing, I'm gonna teach you respect, accountability, and love for others, and self-love, because this is not right. And then, sometimes I do tell them, as a black man, you have to step up your game. You have to make sure that you do these things for yourself. You you cover yourself. You protect yourself. You show you show up your best. Clean up, like seriously, because you already being judged. So it's so much that these kids. This for the girls. This is for the boys. Because I'm dealing. You know these kids. Some of these kids have been abused. They've been molested. The boys and the girls, and they're dealing with so much emotional trauma that's not really being um, addressed. And the people are not even equipped to address the level of trauma that we're dealing with today. That's one of the other things that I'm really noticing that some of the people, they're still stuck on some areas, some immature ways. And it's like, yo, it's not about us. Like, get, let's get out your feelings for a minute. It's not about me and my accolades or whatever. What, it's not about it? me make, trying to make a comeback. It's not about me. It's not about me. Okay, so what is it about? What, what, what do you want me to look at, God? So he had me look at the area of suicide. That's where he punched me in the face. Right. Um, I, I know we're coming pretty soon on <laughs> the first half of this show, but I want to look at the, the spiritual consciousness of humanity. That, that is vitally important. Mm -hmm. And the Word of God declared for where there is no vision, people will perish. And mm -hmm. sinful nature is in itself is disastrous in many ways. And there have to be some sensitive part of all human beings and consciousness that there is a supreme God and there are principles and guidelines that we should adhere to and follow. And I find very often, especially even here in the United States of America, where the word of God has been taken from public places. Uh, the foundation and establishing of God principles is being put on a back burner. So people do as they please. 
And then we have a constitutional, a constitution that is uh, put together by people who has deficiencies of the word of God. Therefore, there's always bleeps and blunders when it comes to that, and it fit one caliber of people, and it doesn't really work for the other. And that's something we want to look at seriously coming back into the net half, because I, I figured, yes, we want to speak about your um, aspirations and your accomplishments and so forth. That would be a part of it. But we want to look at the fine-tuning and vision of what young people should be a breath of. If they're going to be successful, um, avoid criminal activity or violence, um, to know that we are more than just a physical being, that there's also a spiritual being. And when that is neglected, we are subject to all type of problems. And I know that you have a spiritual background, and that I think that will serve a vital um, role in what we're going to discuss, because for lack of vision, as I said, the Word of God declared, people will perish. And the society today become one cancerous place. Um, all the good morals that were existing before among good households, eventually they are almost but eradicated. Everyone to this about themselves, um, even though they go to church and call God's name, they don't know anything about God. They, it's just a tradition. They don't have the foggiest understanding about who God is as a person in spirit. And that's the only way we could come to know him, by serving him in spirit and 